Hamlin County in Brunswick, my famous Hamlin City, the river Western deep and wide washes its wall on the southern side, a pleasanter spot you never spied, but when begins my ditty, almost 500 years ago, to see the townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity. Rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats and bit the babies in the cradles, and ate the cheeses from the bats and licked the soup from the cooks of ladles. Split open the kegs of salt and scraps, made nests in the men's Sunday hats, and even spoiled the women's chats by drowning out their speaking and shrieking and squeaking in fifty different sharps and flats. At last, the people in the body to the town hall came flocking. Tis clear, cried they, our mayor is a naughty, and as for our corporation, shocking to think we buy gowns lined with vermin for adults who can't or won't determine what's best for us of our vermin. You hope because you're old and obese to find in the furry civic robes ease. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking to find the remedy we are lacking, or sure as fate will send you packing. At this, the mayor and corporation quaked with mighty consternation. An hour they sat in council. At length, the mayor broke silence. For a gilder, I'd my ermine gown sell. I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack one's brain. I'm sure my poor head aches again. I scratch it so, but all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just as he said this, what should happen? At the chamber door, but a gentle tap. Bless us, cried the bear, what's that? With the corporation as he sat, looking little through wonder as fat. Nor brighter were his eyes, nor moister, than a too long open oyster, save when at noon his paunch grew mutinous for a plate of turtle green and glutinous. Only the scraping of shoes on a mat, anything like the sound of a rat makes my heart go pit a pat. Come in, cried the mayor, looking bigger, and in did come the strangest figure. His long fair coat from heel to head was half yellow and half red, and he himself was tall and thin, with sharp blue eyes, each like a pin like loose hair and swarthy skin, nor tuft of hair on cheek, nor beard on chin, but lips were a smile when out and in. There was no guessing his kick or kin, and nobody could enough admire this tall man in his quaint attire. Quote one, it's as my great grandsire, starting up with the truck of Judas tongue, had walked his way from his painted tombstone. He advanced towards the council table, and please, your honor, said he, I am able by means of secret charm to draw all the creatures living beneath the sun to crawl or swim or fly or run after me so as you never saw. And I chiefly use my charm on creatures that do people harm, who mole and toad and eat the viper, and people call me the Pied Piper. And here they notice round his neck a scarf of red and yellow stripe to match with his coat of self same check. And that scarf's end hung a pipe, and his fingers they notice were ever strained as if impatient to be plain, upon this pipe, as low it dangled, over his vesture so old fangled. Yes, said he, pipe piper as I am, in Tartari I present can, last June from his huge swarms of gnats, I eased in Asia the Nizam, of a monster's brood of vampire bats, and as for what your brain bewilders, if I rid your town of rats, will you give me one thousand guilders? One, 